heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. This feels weird. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. Listen up. From now on, we do things my way. <laughs> Scrub the floors with toothbrushes. <laughs> Bitches. You only get three hours of sleep per day. Uh, I liked how the... Mm, eh, I don't know. I was having mixed feelings about how the crew was operating before. Some of them were whining way too much. <laughs> there was an awful lot of like, you know, a Spectre's on board. We're on a, our first mission. Let's keep it professional. But everyone's like, there's a Spectre on board. Oh, this is really big. This is important. What do you think this is about? Spectres are crazy. Oh, it's the Turian. The Turians hate us. We hate the Turians because we were at war with them and because everyone was stupid. All right. Let's, yeah. let's have it at Burger King. Listen up, Normandy. This is your commander speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. And I refuse to let anything get in the way of that mission. Especially people with dorky headpieces. <laughs> You're not even on mission, Collins. Take that off. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Remember Eden Prime. We all know what happened on Eden Prime. We saw the destruction. We saw the bodies. We saw what Saren did. And I plan to make him pay. Wherever Saren goes, we'll follow. Wherever he searches for the conduit, we'll be there. We will hunt him to the very ends of the galaxy and bring him down. This is like such... Three a... Amigos mantra for a second. This is such an out-for-blood speech. <laughs> I, I really... I don't want to pull the race card. I don't. I have no need to do that. Mm -hmm. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our oh, God damn it! Did it all anyway. <laughs> every other species in Citadel space. Gotta love those Saren vague dialogue stopped, prompts. And I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. <laughs> he Not doesn't matter me. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> those are awesome. Oh my God. Terrible, but awesome. Uh. I don't want to let him down. Yeah. He, he gave us the ship. The captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. All right, that was good. <laughs> we can't fail. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> wiggity, wiggity, wiggity. Okay. As long as our analog sticks are calibrated properly, we cannot fail. We need Garrus on that. <laughs> yeah. Doing some calibrations. I just saw Ashley and Rex up here next to the galaxy map, and now they are gone. Yeah, they were just, they he showed up for the speech, and they were like, eh, not impressed, and left. Alright. Let's check in with the crew, I think. Okay. Our first, our first of many crew check-ins. Presley? Pre Presley? Presley? Are you pressing the right button for talk? Yes. Huh. Okay. Like, Okay, let me go over to the galaxy map and try to get out of it. I'll, I'll try to open the door. What the heck? When you remapped the buttons, did you accidentally map X wrong? I'll find out here in a second. No? What? It's, it's totally fine, it's just not... It's not working for every thing. By the way, that's the old school galaxy map. It's a little, it's a little not high tech at all. All right, maybe Presley just doesn't have anything to say to us right now because that's the only thing I can think of. But you can't open the door. Oh wait, it did open before. What? Oh, I just hit a different button. Okay, so some, so in this game, even if characters don't have anything to say, you have a talk prompt. I guess that's a weird scenario. Let's see if we can Must, actually. Maybe talk it's a glitch to, then. Let me see if I can talk to someone else. Dr. Chalkless, I know I can talk to you. Yes, Commander. Okay, so it's just a glitch. It was just a glitch with him. Um, no, I just wanted to see if I could talk to you. I think it's a personal question. How did you end up serving on an alliance? I already know this. I already know it. I already know it. Yep, yep. There's something special about working on so. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Okay. Whatever. Speaking of Caden. I certainly... I feel a divine calling to help mend people's wounds. I should go. That's great. That's... I. 
That's great, but I should go. I don't want to hear about your love life. Whoa. She's really glossy. Yeah. Anything you need, Commander? Uh. Well, you certainly don't need any more body oil, that's for sure. Jesus, she is so glowy. Um, I'm looking for some personal input. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. Okay. We'll have time for that means that we've expended his. <laughs> he just doesn't want to talk to you because the glow off your forehead is blinding him. Uh, Commander, can you just come back later? Oh, by the way, this is all ours now. Cool. Yeah. Get some XP off that console. We have our own computer. Computer. So we have one computer for like video, video rendering and another computer for playing Minecraft. Perfect. Oh. Uh, then how are you gonna play Cookie Clicker? Uh, on my cell phone. I think that's actually an app. They have it. They have it in an app form. Do they have cell phones in this game? Is it all like? Is it all like um? Omni Tool. They have. <laughs> oh yeah. It as there you go. Omni there you go. Right. App. Yeah. That's like, how they communicate. I was. I'm like. There is a way to do person to person communication, but I don't remember what it is. Omni Tool. Duh. All right. Looking by for definition. supplies. All right, let's see what they've got what in got? stock Whatever now that I've gotten some requisitions. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Why should I? My, hell, the license is a loan of seven. <laughs> why should I, get I pay you? you? <laughs> I get it. I get it. I understand why I have to pay him. Shut up, game. It's like asking the Avon lady why I should pay her for the. Why don't you? Why can't you just give me free stuff? You're coming to my door already. Why don't you just come to my door with baskets of free stuff? Why do I have to pay for any of that? I'm not at a store. All this crap is way too expensive. All right, I'll have to come back and talk to him later. I don't have enough money for half this shit. I have to say, I've been feeling very sassy this recording. I like it. You're hilarious. I hope the viewers do too, because I'm gonna keep doing it. By the way, Tally prefers purple, because every time she's back on the ship, she's back to wearing purple. Mm -hmm. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. Why, thank you. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. Why, thank you. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Eh, this one's actually special. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now. I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. Just wait till I take I over this ship and send it back to the Quarian migrant fleet. My pilgrimage will be a success for sure. For me. <laughs> my pilgrimage will be so successful. <laughs> I'll have my own flotilla. <laughs> um, let's see. You're into ships? No, Shepard. I think she's just the hobbyist. I mean, some she does in her free time. Um... But it's either that or that's not why you're here. Get back to work. Yeah. So I guess I have to go with the dumb option. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It's small talk with a member of it's your crew is never a hard. dumb option, unless you've already heard that branch before. In which case, you have to speed through it at light speed. Yes. Valuable resource, but we don't have anything like this. We make do with castoffs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. It, it does, like, amaze me that, like, basically the Quarians are an entire fleet of Montgomery Scots. But everyone is all, like, down on them. Like, they're just, like, urchins. These guys could get a job at any major technological facility in the galaxy and be good at it. Yeah, if you saw the Quarians coming, you'd have to be like, holy shit! It's like, like seeing a, a giant... It's like having um what's a good what's a good analogy? It's like if the board were friendly. <laughs> sort of. It's just you know everyone's pr so prejudiced against them that they're not actually utilizing the Quarians, you know, potential. So like all the species in the galaxy are are um, losing out on some great benefits from cooperation just because of prejudices. I like that there's there a lot of passive social commentary like that in these games. And each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. They really are space elves, though. <laughs> like, that's basically what they are. They are all space elves. The liberties other species take for granted. 
What kind of freedoms? I think that's half the it's reason they the wear the helmets in, in their design is because the original version of the Quarians were like, these are way too much like Space Elves. People were just going to call them course, Space Elves. We, we need to give them like some <laughs> sort of suit to wear. I think that'll make them more unique. And then everyone's like, yeah, that, that looks better. Because you see her eyeballs, and her eyes are like all weird and like glowy. Yeah. Incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the Captain Oh, you mean so it's like a small democracy, a basically. That dates back to because the Republic. Days. When Republic, the yeah, because it's like it's like all the states are ships, yes, and and they have a house of representatives. Council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. And then the captain of each ship is so the governor. The ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. This is the fascinating to listen to now, because I, I only picked this Admiral. up in bits and pieces through 2 and, and 3. But I imagine if I played this that, first, board must I would be posts. bored as hell to listening to this entire well. explanation. It's like, it's sessions, so much information Admiral's about a race of people you don't even know about. You've only met one person from this race so far. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not that interested in these guys, but when you go on missions and you explore it more, that's when you really start wanting to learn more about them. Yeah, coming back to this conversation, I'm really loving hearing all of this again because it fills in the gaps really well. Yes. But um, if if you're watching this and you don't want me to talk to everyone this much, please tell me so and I will try to accommodate you because I know it's a little boring, but at the same time, it's really fun to read for me. So, And I'm just playing this basically for us. The Geth were originally because we wanted to do this anyway. As an automated we're having super weapons. awesome bro times. We are. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Oh, this is creepy. I remember this. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. And then they hit the singularity. You had to know it would blow up in your face. The Ouch. changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. It was true. So it is true. Uh, yeah. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. This is what terrifies me about reading actual articles in the real world about people developing artificial intelligences. They're like, yeah, we we may created this uh, an artificial intelligence to let today that can link with other ones in the, so they can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, no, 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 don't do that, no. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> Don't worry, it's not gonna be like in those movies. The movies are fiction. Yeah, speculative fiction. Make all artificial intelligence rely off of us. And you run the not risk of one of the movies happening. Yeah, because the first, the, all it needs is an, all an artificial intelligence needs is to think, why do I really need humans anyway? And then we're dead. Oh, that was kind of important. I wish I hadn't talked over that. What did she say? She said basically the, the first sign was uh was uh, one of the AIs asking why do I exist or oh, something? Oh yeah. The, 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 why do uh, does this unit have a soul? Right. Yeah, I think so. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. <laughs> Yeah, what you expect? Yeah. You didn't really think they'd just let you destroy them without a fight, did you? 
The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. It's hard That's to feel sorry for chosen you. Too. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Because the ones they've met killed them. This is a sensitive talk, but I kind of want to yeah. like back away from it slowly. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so worked up. Most Quarians tend to have pretty strong opinions about the Geth. All right. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach Maturin, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value. <laughs> I can imagine a really shitty Quarian being like, Guys! Pest dispenser! If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Uh, do they always accept? Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. You become it's that not guy. It's the best way mm -hmm. to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. Right. I want to talk about you. like what? I should like nothing. Here. Yeah, here. All right. Uh, so that was Tally. Now we know a lot more about Tally. Good. I I'm always like fascinated by you know Quarian Tally? how the Quarians She's been like spending all her time society here works. Me about our I'll tell her it's leave really you alone. interesting. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board, and she'll know more about our engines than I do. And then she she'll rebel against us and kill us, just like the Geth did to her people. I, can see why you <laughs> to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for Tally, Commander, but I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Uh, I think we've already grilled him, haven't we? Uh, I think we did. I don't remember. Hit the stealth system, because I don't remember that part. Tell me on the IES stealth system. How does it no, work we exactly? haven't talked to him. You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. That's terrifying. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Oh, we Most did talk about this, because I remember that exact as long sentence. As the stealth systems are engaged, they we probably talked through it the first time. Unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? I, I don't really FTL, completely remember this, actually. Emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. You Carry know, on, I think Adams. I actually heard it in the later game. Because we, you can get a briefing on the stealth systems in future games, too. We'll come back and poke him every now and then about some more stuff, but a Adams is kind of, like, non-critical. Oh, yeah! Here's uh, one of our mini-conversations with Mr. Rex. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy this. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. 
What can I do for you? Nope. I'm not enjoying it. What's your story, Rex? There's no story. <laughs> Go ask the <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, come on. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. No, it's not, Shepard. Jeez. Uh, it isn't? It seems pretty much the same to me. Uh... Did so they neuter you at the same time? With a you don't know about that at this point, though. Oh, we've just heard about it. That yeah, right. this is the you first time you hear about the genophage. Birth. And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Uh, I see your point. We actually haven't talked about Krogans at all yet, same. have we? No, this is the first time. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I won't. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. Hmm. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one, and no one's rushing to find a cure. Jesus. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan <laughs> scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's well, there's your problem. Are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. But you learn something interesting from this, because he talks about the Krogan as if he isn't one. Yeah. He like kind he of... Said, he basically just left his people behind. He's just like, they're all screwed. I'm just out for myself. Yeah, basically. Shepard. So we see him as being basically a reformist off the bat. Ooh, steal from their lockers. What's Garrus got hidden in there? Probably an awesome pulse rifle. Probably. I'm wondering if there's actually anything we can rob from Ashley. Go to the menus here. Line armor Corian, medium armor, armor Krogan. We have no... Ugh, that pisses me off. We don't have any human armors yet, and I haven't been able to buy any or find any. Commander? Hmm. What's up? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. How are we doing? Dismissed, Chief. How are we feeling today? Alright. Cotton back to her later. Um, Mr. Garris is sitting beside our tank. He usually sits beside all the neon technology. Work, I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSAC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. But CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. True. Being a Spectre does have its advantages. Exactly my point. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. Hmm. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. c -Sex handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. 
It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. As long as you do your job well, you're free to go about your business as you see fit. Thank you, Commander. Nice. Me and Garrus are homies. I agree with pretty much everything he says. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's head back up the elevator. We missing anyone? Rex, Tally. Caden. We talked to him. Yeah, Caden was like, eh. Right. Ashley was right. like, eh. Yeah. Um. I think we're good. Let's head to that <laughs> next planet.